Hi, I'm Michael Bender, and this micro lesson focuses on the work breakdown structure, or WBS. The WBS is likely the most important and also one of the best known of the project management constructs. And for good reason. With a solid work breakdown structure, you can proceed with the rest of planning with confidence. If your work breakdown structure is weak or missing elements, you'll likely find you'll never catch up on your project. Now before we go too far, understand that there are two approaches to addressing the WBS. The first is using a work approach. Well, that's not surprising, it is called a work breakdown structure. The second, however, is called the deliverables approach. In the mid-1990s, we in the project management world discovered that this approach is usually a little bit better and a little bit more thorough. However, if you're new to project management, or maybe you're working with a young or inexperienced team, I still recommend the work approach. Most people find it easier. It's kind of the way we think, it's the way we were brought up. As you get more experience, you'll likely switch to a deliverables-oriented approach. For today, we'll focus on the work approach. Now, what is a work breakdown structure? Well, <laughs> simply put, it's the structure of the breakdown of the work. It's essentially a hierarchical diagram showing how the work is summarily decomposed into smaller and smaller elements. So we're going to take a large unit of work, we'll start off with the project, and then break those down into smaller elements, take each one of those and break them down into smaller elements. The process is called decomposition. It's actually a lot easier than it sounds. Let me give you an example. Now for this example, we're going to mow the lawn. So, That'll be our project. Well, I simply need to break this down into smaller steps. Well, what do you do when you mow the lawn? Well, if you're me, I tend to dress appropriately. I'm going to wear good shoes and pants that I don't mind getting a little dirty. Then I'll go into the garage and open the garage door. Pull out the lawnmower and fill it with gas. Then when I'm ready, I'll mow the front lawn. I'll mow the left side. I'll mow the back. And then I'll mow the right side. I'll put the lawnmower away. And then I'm going to take a shower. We now have a work breakdown structure for mowing the lawn. Now notice we've taken a work approach on this, you'll notice that all of these start off with verbs. When I'm doing a work approach, I like to see strong action verbs followed by nouns. Well, the noun doesn't have to be that important. Um, dress will do fine here. Open garage door, pull out mower, fill with gas, mow front, mow left side, mow back, mow right side, mow, put mower away, and take a shower. Again, using a work approach, most people find it easier coming out of the gate, and it's what I recommend for new project managers or for new teams. Now that we understand the basics of what a WBS is, let's take it to a new level. As you can see, I've cleaned off my whiteboard, and we're going to be using most of it for this particular demonstration. But before we go there, 
there's a couple basic things we should go over. First is, why do we do work breakdown structures? What is the goal of the WBS? Well, it's actually quite simple. The goal of the WBS is simply to identify all the work that has to be done. Nothing more, nothing less. Identify all the work on the project. I don't care about sequence. I don't care about cost. I don't care about resources. I don't care about any of those other issues. The only thing I need out of a WBS is simply to identify all the work that has to be done. Now, there's a couple rules with breakdown structures. For those of you familiar with project management, you'll know that there are several kinds of breakdown structures. We already know about the work breakdown structure, and I introduced you to the deliverables breakdown structure. There's also a goals breakdown structure, resource breakdown structure, and a few others. Now, all breakdown structures follow the same rules, and there are only two of them, and they're quite simple. In each breakdown structure, we're going to take a large element and decompose it down into smaller elements. Our first rule is the decomposition must be complete, nothing missing. Decomposition is complete, nothing missing. The second rule is the first rule's converse. There should be nothing added or nothing extra to the decomposition. Rule two. Nothing extra. When I'm running a project, that's all I do all day. Nothing missing, nothing extra. Nothing missing, nothing extra. I do it with work. I do it with resources. I do it with requirements. I do it with money. Nothing missing, nothing extra. Nothing missing, nothing extra. That's the key to keeping your project within its scope. So let's see how this works. Now we're going to stick with our work focus. So again, we're going to use a work-oriented WBS. But instead of doing an outline format like I did prior, I'm going to do a hierarchical format. And I actually prefer the hierarchical format for a few reasons, and we'll get into that a bit later. And for this project, we're going to take on something maybe a little bigger. It may not sound a little bigger, but after we take a look at it, I think you'll agree. Something we all do. We're going to go grocery shopping. So our project is to buy groceries. That's our project. Now, if you're familiar with project management, you may be familiar with phases. When we get a little bit more sophisticated in project management, we like to use phases. Phases are a collection of activities that really focus in one area or one kind of subject. For this particular one, we're going to have, I don't know, let's see, four maybe. Before I go grocery shopping, first thing I'm going to have to do is prepare. So we're going to have a preparation phase. Once I'm prepared to shop, they can actually acquire my goods. We're going to call that procurement. Well, once I've procured my groceries, I'm going to take them home. We'll call that transportation. And then once I get them home, I need to put them away. Uh, but this is a project management seminar, so we need to kick this up a little bit. We're going to restock inventory. Now, if you live alone, you probably don't have to do this. 
If you don't live alone, you may want to check with your spouse or whoever happens to be in the house to make sure you got it right. So we're going to have a review. So those will be my phases. I can now start identifying all the work that has to be done in each phase. Well, if I want to be prepared to shop, I'm going to need a list. I'm going to need money. I'm going to need a store. I'm going to need to be at the store. So let's go ahead and see what we need to do. And again, we'll take a work focus. We're going to create a list. We're going to get money. We're going to uh, prepare our car. <laughs> We're going to select a store. We're going to get our shopping bags. And we're going to go to the store. And again, nothing missing, nothing extra, nothing missing, nothing extra, nothing missing, nothing extra. Um, I'll have, if, if I end this phase, I'll have a list, I'll have money, I'll be at a store, I have my bags, I think I'm good to go. So, I'm now at the store, I have money, I have bags, I have my list. I can now go up and down aisles and collect goods. Walk store. Select items. Pay for items. I can't think of anything else at the moment. That looks pretty good to me. All right, so I've paid for my items. They're sitting in a shopping cart. I'm either have just left the store or leaving the store. I now need to transport them home. Well, I'm going to load the car. Um, depending on who's doing this, there may be one little thing we want to do here. Uh, typically, guys, open chip bag. Guys, ladies do this too, but usually it's chocolate or something else like that. Drive home. Consume chips. and dispose of evidence. Ladies, if you happen to send your beloved one out shopping, uh, check the receipt, see how many chip bags were purchased, check the inventory, see how many are there. You'll usually find one missing. All right. So I'm at home, groceries are in the car, I'm ready to restock inventory. I'm going to restock my freezer. Restock my fridge. Restock my pantry. And replace shopping bags. I think we got everything covered. Um, now review. It's perfectly okay to have a one-to-one. -one. It's perfectly okay to do that. I do that all the time just to keep each layer complete. So here's our work breakdown structure for buying groceries. <coughs> Like all work breakdown structures, I can continue to decompose each one of these. 
So, how do I create a list? Well, first thing I have to do is interview my stakeholders. One of the first things we do in every single project. What does this mean? Um, dear, I'm going grocery shopping. Is there anything you need? Are we having any visitors over this week? Are we going to do a barbecue out in the back like we talked about? Find out what people need. Basically, we're gathering requirements. We're going to conduct our interview. Once I understand what we're going to be eating for the week, I'll create a menu. And from this, I can create a list of ingredients that we'll need, except this is a project management lesson. So we're going to use more formal terminology. We're going to call this a bill of materials. Now, when I do this in a, in a live classroom, one of the first things that people tell me is, oh, you should check your inventory. Well, that's nice. I checked my inventory, but what am I looking for? Without a set of requirements, without knowing what I'm going to eat, checking my inventory is not going to do me a lot of good. A lot of you will say, yeah, but I know exactly what I want. That's true. Unless, of course, you have to interview your stakeholders. <laughs> that may be what you want, but if you have other people living in the house, that's not going to work. So, I'm going to interview my stakeholders, create a menu. We're going to create a bill of materials. You're going to call it a shopping list. We are then going to check inventory. The bill of materials tells me what I need. My inventory tells me what I have. I'm then going to determine what I need. Except again, this is a project management lesson. We're going to use fancy terms. We're going to conduct a gap analysis. And that should give me my shopping list. Well, let's just take one or two more. How about getting money? Well, I have to make an assumption here. I have to assume we actually have money to get. <laughs> so anytime I make an assumption in a project, it goes on the assumptions list. I have a job. I have money. Well, it may not be in the right place. I may need to balance a checkbook. I may need to select exactly how I'm going to pay for the groceries. Am I going to use an ATM card? Am I going to use a check? Am I going to use cash? So I may have to balance checkbook. Select payment method. And then get whatever material I need for that payment. You know, and now that I'm thinking about it, you know I forgot something in here. Coupons. I forgot to think about coupons. Well, here's the nice thing. I'm just planning. This is just a whiteboard. I haven't gone to the store. I haven't spent any money. I haven't made any major commitments yet. Making changes now is easy. I just throw another thing on the list. So I can put that under get money, but let's drop it down here. Clip coupons. Well, clipping now usually means going online. <laughs> but occasionally, we still get the flyers, and we're still going to be cutting out coupons. All right. Repairing car, I'm going to need keys. I may need to clean out the trunk. Selecting the store. Depending on what you like, you may like some stores for some items, other stores for other items. 
get your shopping bags, drive to store. And I can continue going through this as much as I need to. Now, this is a hierarchical form of the work breakdown structure, and I prefer it to the outline. And here's why. If I show a typical project in outline format, like we did with mowing the lawn, to a senior manager, it just looks like a whole bunch of words that they just don't get. However, if I do it in a hierarchical form, they understand all the work, they can see how things map up, it's a much clearer form of communication. Unfortunately, most project management software doesn't give you this. What I found is mind mapping software does. So I usually use mind mapping software to build my work breakdown structures. I'm going to clean off the board and then we'll talk about what's next in our lesson. In this micro lesson, we talked about work breakdown structures. We now know the goal of the WBS. Simply to identify all the work in the project. We don't care about resources. We don't care about sequence. We don't care about cost. The only thing we need to do is identify all the work. We know that there are two rules to all breakdown structures. When we take a large item and decompose it down into its smaller items, the decomposition must be complete. Nothing missing. And certainly, we don't want to do any more than we have to. Rule two is rule one's converse. Nothing extra. We know that there are two approaches to work breakdown structures. There's the work approach, and there's a the deliverables approach. If you're relatively new to projects, or your team is relatively new to projects, I recommend the work approach. We just tend to think better that way. As you get a little bit more experienced, a lot of us like to switch to a deliverables approach. There are certain advantages, but it's a little harder to get right coming out of the gate. We also talked about two ways of displaying the WBS. In our first simple project of mowing the lawn, we used an outline format. And you may have noticed it's really nothing more than a checklist. And of course, each under, under those items, I can have a sub-checklist. But if you're doing, if you have a to-do list or you have a punch list if you're doing construction, that's really nothing more than a, a simple WBS. The other way of displaying a WBS is with hierarchical. That's the way I prefer. It just communicates better. If a senior manager, your sponsor, or client is looking at an outline format of a decent sized project, it's just all going to look like a bunch of words. However, in hierarchical format, it's much easier for them to understand what's happening in your project and all the work that's required. And we did a brief introduction of project phases. I hope you found this lesson useful. We look forward to seeing you in another micro lesson and may all your projects be successful.